Good afternoon, and uh, I would like to again welcome uh, all of you to this uh, workshop. Um, I'll take the first part of the presentation just to talk about the metrics uh, that's reported in the instructor report of the student experience of instruction. And then I'll turn it over to my colleagues to introduce the instructor dashboard, which is under development. And then we would have a question and answer and uh, some activity uh, at, before the end of the workshop. Uh, so next slide, please. Uh, yeah, so in the next 90 minutes, um, we will, um, I'll go through what we expect to achieve. We'll talk about changes to the instructor report, the type of data that we are dealing with, which is the student experience of instruction data. Um, and then I'll go into more details of about the new metrics uh, that is reported in the circular report. Uh, there will be an introduction to the uh, a demo of the uh, instructor dashboard, which is under development. Uh, and uh, we will have uh, an opportunity for question and answer, and we will end with a group activity um, at the end. And possibly some more time for question and answer. So by the end of this uh, session, uh, we hope that you will be the participant will be able to will be have uh, will have a better understanding of the report and the metrics in the instructor report, and be able to explain how two of those statistics, the interpolated median and percent favorable, um, can be used along with a measure of dispersion, the dispersion index, uh, to interrogate the data in a more meaningful and um, fairer way. And also be able to uh, use graphics, as simple scatter plots to uh, explain uh, these concepts uh, behind the uh, new metrics. Uh, the changes started back in 2018. Uh, and through a transition phase, we first switched from the standard deviation as a measure of variation to the dispersion index. Uh, during that transition, we were reporting the old metrics along with the new. And in the 2019-20 academic year, we switched to the new metrics. Um, the key statistics reported on the report include the response rate, the interpolated median, percent favorable, and dispersion index. Um, and this is just by the way, there are some changes that uh, were introduced in 2021, where the six university module items, the six questions were updated with the new modified questions, uh, but this is beyond the scope of this workshop, so I won't be talking about those. Um, uh, just a, a bit about the student experience of instruction data. Um, the data is categorical in nature but it is also ordinal. And by ordinal, we mean that the categories in which we capture the data are have a, some sense of order. For example, on a five-point scale, strongly agree is better, higher than agree, which is higher than neutral, uh, and so on. And uh, at UBC, we collect this data by using a balanced Likert type rating scale. Now, a balance scale would have equal number of favorable and unfavorable responses, which may or may not be, uh, which may or may not include a, a neutral response. So as long as there is equal number of favorable responses and unfavorable responses, uh, the scale would be considered balanced. So the UMI question used a balanced five-point scale that's balanced around a neutral response, two favorable and two unfavorable. There are some faculty questions that use a balanced seven point like a type of a scale, again, with three responses that are unfavorable, three that are favorable, and a neutral response. Next slide, please. Uh, so these are the, the examples of the two response, the, the two uh, balance scales that we use uh, at UBC, five point, and as I said, some faculty use a seven point scale. Both of them have a neutral uh, category. Uh, with equal number of response uh, categories on both sides of the neutral. Next slide, please. So uh, we're going to take a quick look at the instructor report. You're pr probably familiar with this report. Uh, on the first page, you have a description of the section, the instructor. This is just a test uh, run with only two students and 
uh, two of them responding with a 100% response rate. So this information is in the dark blue. And then blue doesn't have the capability to tag or to flag uh, surveys that did not meet the recommended minimum response rate. So we provide this table so that an instructor can look to see if their sur particular survey has met the recommended minimum. Uh, for example, if, uh, if the class has 40 students, that would be in the 35 to the 49 category, and 40% would be uh, would be the recommended minimum. Uh, does that mean if there is 39 or 38% response rate that the data is not use not useful? Uh, no, it doesn't mean that. It just means that um, if we do not meet the recommended minimum, uh, then we need to um, uh, look at other factors and and and. Uh, uh, interpret the data with, with caution. Next slide, please. Uh, next, we have the six item, the six university module item, the six questions. And we have the uppercase N is the number of invited students. In this case, we have only two in this test example. We have two that responded, 100% response rate. And then we have a breakdown of the responses by the five categories, ranging from strongly disagree to agree. Uh, and you can point to them as a dash, um, followed by uh, a not applicable category, and then the interpolated median and dispersion index. I just want to say that the interpolated median is reported to the nearest one tenth, uh, to the nearest uh, to one decimal. Um, the dispersion index ideally should be two because of the range of it. We'll talk about that later, but unfortunately, blue doesn't have that. I think it only allows you to select the number of decimals for all the statistics, um, uh, at least for those ones. The percent favorable is reported below, and it is to the nearest uh, 1%. Next slide, please. Uh, so I'm going to talk now about the three, uh, the three statistics in more details. The first one, which is the most straightforward one, is percent favorable on in a five-point scale. The favorable responses are those that are higher than neutral. Uh, agree and strongly agree. And percent favorable would be the proportion of the responses that are higher than neutral expressed as a percentage of the total received responses. So for example, if out of 20 responses, we have 18 uh, of agree and strongly agree, then that would be a 90% uh, percent favorable uh, rating for that particular question. Uh, this is a simple statistic. It is intuitive. It's informative, but it is blunt in the sense that it does not distinguish between a four and five or between the one and two. And, um, and so that's why we need to use it with other statistics to uh, have a better uh, meaningful look into the, into the evaluation. Next slide, please. Uh, the particular dispersion index, which is a measure of the variation in the data that we use at UBC, uh, this index is actually very uh, suitable for ordinal data. And it ranges in value between zero and one. A value of zero indicate that all the students respondent rated their experience using the same category. So they all responded with agree or strongly agree, whatever the case may be, uh, resulting in a, in a dispersion of zero. There is no dispersion in the data. One would be the extreme on the other end. And this happens if we have an even number of responses, and the respondent is split evenly between the two extremes of a strongly disagree and strongly agree. So we have a very polarized rate, rating of their experience, and that will result in a dispersion index of one. Uh, in our data at UBC, dispersion index rarely exceeds 0.8, and when it does, so if we have a dispersion index greater than 0.8, usually that comes from a small uh, sections where the minimum recommended response rate was not met. I will talk more about uh, about those statistics in, 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 in more detail. So uh, here, there's actually, these are examples of the dispersion. Uh, I just want to focus on the, the response categories, the first column, the count, second column, and the dispersion index rate. Okay, and don't worry about the rest of the calculations. Okay, so what we have here is we have 60 responses, and they were split between two neighboring cells in two neighboring categories. So in this case, 30 in neutral and 30 in agree. When the responses are split evenly 
split between two, not, not evenly, but split between two neighboring categories, the maximum dispersion will be 0.25. And you see that in red. Right? And if we change this distribution between the two cells, the dispersion index will go uh, lower than 0.25, as long as they, it is in two neighboring cells. In the second example, we have the responses between two categories that are one category apart. So it's uh, agree, uh, sorry, disagree and agree with neutral in between them. So they are not neighboring cells. There, uh, there is actually one category separating them. In that case, the maximum dispersion would be 0.5. And if they are separated by two categories, as in the third example, the maximum dispersion will be 0.75. So that's just a theoretical aspect of this uh, particular measure. Next slide, please. And here we see if you can click all three of them. So the first one is an example of a low dispersion. And we see that the responses in this particular case is in two cells. Most of them, 40 is in one cell, 20 is in the neighboring uh, category. And that results in a low dispersion. In the second example, we have the responses are spread across the five categories. Uh, if you look at the count column, this uh, are spread across the five categories. And this results in a high dispersion of almost 0.9. And then the last example is the theoretical maximum when the student responses are split between the extreme uh, uh, va values of strongly disagree and strongly agree. And that results in a dispersion index of one. Next slide, please. So, so before I get into the third statistic, which is the interpolated median, I just want to talk about medians and distributions in general. Uh, and we're going to follow those two examples for instructor A and B. Uh, these are the responses for a particular question, and they are ranked from lowest to highest. Right. And we these are actually 18 responses, uh, sorry, uh, 19 responses. So they are odd number. And so the median will be the 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 tenth um, uh, the tenth response uh, with nine responses above it and nine responses below it. Um, so the median here is four, but if we look at the value of the median of four, we see that there are actually seven responses, which is light blue, the fives that are higher than the value of the median, and there are three responses in red that are below the value of the median. And there are nine responses that are equal to the median. So I just want you to keep this, we're gonna see this distribution again. Uh, in instructor B, the median is also four. And if we look at the distribution, we see that again, we have nine responses that are equal to the median. So there is nine fours. There are only two responses in light blue that are higher than the median. And there are eight responses that are below the median. And we're gonna see how we're gonna take that into consideration when we compute the interpolated median in the next slide, please. So the interpolated median is simply the median with the 50th percentile and it is adjusted. So it's an adjusted median. Think of the interpolated median as an adjusted median. And the adjustment depends on the number of responses that are less than the median, plus responses that are greater than the median, and those that are equal to the median. So in the case of an odd number of responses, one value would be the median, and we adjust it by the quantity uh, on the right, that equation I m equal m plus n plus minus n minus divided by two n. So the number of responses greater than the median is n plus, n minus would be the one that's uh, the number of responses below the median, and n is the number of responses equal to the median. So we use that equation to calculate the interpolated. If we have even number of responses, that would be the case of equation two. And in that case, the interpolated median is simply equal to that. And we will see, we'll continue with the examples in the next slide. So these are the two uh, instructors, A and B, that we saw before. And we saw the distribution relative to the value of the median. So in the first case, case A, uh, we have nine responses that are equal to the median, five, seven that are greater than the median, the, the, the value fives, and three that are below the median. So because we have more responses higher than the value of the median relative to those lower than the value of the median, the, me the median uh, is adjusted or interpolated or adjusted upwards, resulting in an interpolated median of 4.2. In the case of an instructor B, we have more responses that are red that are higher than, the, that are lower than the value of the median, 
we have the same number of responses, nine equal to the median, is nine falls, but there is only two that are higher than the median because we have more responses below the median value. The median is adjusted or interpolated downwards. And in this case, the interpolated median is 3.7. Uh, so next, we're going to look at those two distribution in picture. So this is uh, the, the, the histogram tells us that these are two uh, markedly different distributions. They both have the same median of four. One have an interpolated median of 4.2, the other is 3.7. And we see the associated percent favorable are 84% and 58%. And this, uh, the use of this matrix uh, in a publication that we have uh, submitted for, for publication uh, is based on a unique relationship between the interpolated median and percent favorable, which I'll get into more in details. Um, and uh, and that was that actually formed the basis for the use of this matrix at UBC. Uh, next slide. So this is the case of equation two, where we have even number of responses. And in this case, the median will actually be the average of the two values in the middle, because we have even number of responses. And here in this case, it is the, um, the value between five and two. Uh, and the median in both cases is actually in both example, C and D is 3.5. And below I gave the expected range of the dispersion index, right? So if the data is all fives and two in the first example, if, if, if this is all the data we have in this example, the dispersion index would be exactly 0.75, but it is potential, There's a, there is a potential that the two, which is the ninth value could be the only two and the rest could be ones. So in that case, the dispersion will be higher um, and it will approach, uh, approach one. Uh, in this case here between, if all the values are fours and threes, the dispersion index would be 0.25. But if we have fives and twos and ones uh, in the data, which is quite possible, then the dispersion will be higher than 0.25 and it could approach uh, one. Uh, if all the values, if, if the four and the three that we have in the center are the only four and three, and the rest of the data is fives and ones, the dispersion index will approach will approach one. So this is the case for the interpolation. Um, if the two middle values um, are both favorable responses, let's say if the if the median is between a four and five, then percent favorable will necessarily be greater than fifty percent. If the median is the value between two and favorable responses, like a two and a three or a three and one, then percent favorable will necessarily be less than 50%. When the median is the middle value or the average between uh, a favorable response and an unfavorable response, as in those cases, then percent favorable will be exactly 50%. Okay, uh, next slide, please. So when in the case of an even number of responses on a five point scale, where the median is the midpoint between a favorable and unfavorable response, these are all the possible outcomes. So the mid, mid scores could be a three and a four or a three and five, two and four, et cetera. And this will be the, the median or the interpolated median because they are one and the same. And the expected uh, range of the dispersion index is given. I just want you to note the last one if the median is the mid value between a value of one and five, that means there is no twos, threes, or fours. The data is made of ones and five, and the dispersion index would be the maximum one as we talked about before. So given that the students tend to rate their experience of instruction favorably more often than not, and this is well established in the literature, the interpolated median is actually preferred to the mean and, and to the median for that matter, because it reflects the distribution of responses a lot better. Um, it is also closely related to the percent favorable. And by closely related, we don't mean just a simple statistical correlation. There is actually a unique uh, and interesting relationship between the interpolated median and percent favorable that has not been previously reported in the literature. And we are actually uh, reporting it in our publication and using it as a basis for uh, for this metrics, which we have been using in UBC now for the last uh, uh, few years. As a general rule, for a five point Likert scale, 
an interpolated median of 3.5 correspond to a percent favorable rating of exactly 50%. And this is mathematical exactness um, for exactly 50%. And it divides the evaluations or the, the instructor evaluations into two distinct classes. Those are above 50% and those are below uh, 50%. And we can see that in, in, in the next slide when we show the relationship in a graph. So this is UMI question five about the uh, from 2020. So these are the old question about this instructor showing concern for the student learning. Um, by and large for all the questions, 90% plus of the instructors will be in the upper right quadrant. You can point to that. And five to 10% will be in the lower left quadrant. Mathematically, uh, there should be no values, no, no, no dots in the upper left quadrant or the lower right, meaning that if the interpolated median is less than 3.5, the percent favorable cannot exceed 50%, nor when the interpolated median is greater than 3.5, uh, percent favorable will not go below 50%. And sorry, if you go back to that uh, previous slide, please. Yeah. So each each dot in this graph represent an instructor for that question. So we have the interpolated median for that. So if you point to the next one, the one next to it, is it dash? The one to the yeah, right, not the next one, next to it. Yes. So uh, this dash is pointing to this instructor here. Uh, this is actually campus wide for that question. This is all the instructors at UBC. This particular instructor has an interpolated median of 4.5, right? If you go vertically down. And if we go across, we see that they have a percent favorable of about 66 or 67 percent, between 65 and 70. And, and, and so this is how we read uh, this uh, scatter plot. Uh, I'll talk more about this relationship and show how the three statistics uh, even though we are plotting the, the percent favorable across the interpolated median, uh, dispersion index plays an important role in interpreting uh, in the interpretation of, of, of these results. And we will see that in more details. But next, we will see how this relationship extends to a balanced uh, seven-point scale. And if we see here, the only difference is that the on the x-axis, the pivot point of this relationship shift to an uh, interpolated median of 4.5. Uh, but again, the data is, uh, is divided into two upper right and left, uh, lower left uh, quadrant with no data in the other two quadrant. Uh, in the next slide, we'll take an example of one academic unit. And uh, if you can just click so that we can see the data. So this is one academic unit, uh, a particular uh, school or department. Again, this is from 2020. And what we have here is all the instructors uh, for that particular question five in this unit. The red dot is the aggregate for that academic unit. It, is an, it has an interpolated median of, the, the data is on the left, an interpolated median of 4.2 and a percent favorable of 76% and a dispersion that's moderate to high of 0.52. Now we're going to look at four instructors, A, B, C, and D. And we'll start with instructor A. Instructor A has, if you look at the data to the left, it ha has, uh, for this particular question, an interpolated median of 3.9, which is about mm, slightly lower than the aggregate of 4.2. But the percent favorable is 80% which is four percentage points higher than the aggregate. And the reason being that it has a slightly lower uh, dispersion of 0.35. So if we use the mean or the median or even the interpolated median, this instructor could be rated as being lower than average, slightly lower or lower than average. But if we look at all three statistics, we see that because of the low dispersion, this instructor actually has a higher percentage of students that rated their experience favorable. Okay, the picture will get clearer as we look at the other three instructors. If we look at instructor C, we see that instructor C has a 
uh, an interpolated median of 4.3, which is comparable to the aggregate of 4.2 for that unit. And, but because of the low dispersion of 0.24, that's a low, considered low, they have a percent favorable of 100%, meaning that all the students who responded rated their experience favorably. Again, if we just use the mean on their interpolated median, this instructor would have been rated average, but there is really nothing average about 100% favorable uh, responses from the students. Uh, now we're going to look at instructor D and B. Both of them have a relatively high, on a scale of one to five, interpolated median, 4.6, 4.5, which is, would be considered uh, high on this scale of one to five. If we look at instructor D, because of the low dispersion in their data of 0.25, there is a 100% favorable response, meaning that all the students rated their experience favorably. Whereas instructor B, even though this instructor has a slightly higher interpolated median of 4.6, because of the high dispersion in their data, the percent favorable is 73%, which means that more than one out of four of the students in this section who responded did not rate their experience favorably. This example is meant to show that the, when we look at the three statistics um, together, we will be able to meaningfully and in a more fair way uh, look at the uh, inter interpol uh, interpret and, and look at the, uh, the, the, the evaluation of instructors more so than if we just look at one uh, and one statistic. And this is the basis actually on which we switch to this uh, new metrics. And this is the basis for uh, us proposing this metrics in, in a publication uh, that we hope to see the light uh, soon. And I believe this brings me to the end of this presentation. And I'm going to turn it over to Alison to talk about the uh, instructor dashboard. Sure, thanks, Abdul Sim. Um, I just have a quick, you know, quick introduction to the dashboard. Um, it is uh, something that um, our team has been working on in the last year or so, uh, mostly just Tash working on building it and developing it. Um, and um, we've been working on this in the last year. And then uh, what, we, what we are hoping to do is get her some feedback in the next couple of months um, and with the goal to release the dashboard to instructors. Um, as we release um, the winter term one results in, uh, and that is in January. So um, so that's uh, our current target timeline. Um, and uh, I'll just turn it over to Tostash to, to um, and, and what you're, you're about to see is a very, um, still in the devel development stage, quite pilot. Um, you, 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 we're kind of still working on it and making changes as we go. So uh, feel free to um, you know, let us know what you think and provide feedback. Um, this is um, would be great for us as we uh, work on this. Thank you. OK, thank you, Alison and uh, Abdulazim. Uh, so I will go through uh, the dashboard. Uh, let me know. You can see the dashboard, right? Uh, yes. OK, good. So this is the landing. Uh, page of the dashboard that uh, that is working progress and the landing page has some information about the different measures and it has some uh, navigation buttons as you can see this is uh, the contact uh, link uh, if any, anyone wants to contact the CA team and there is also a more uh, detailed contact here uh, when you click in it will open a new uh, page so that you can get more information about uh, this say and this is also there there are also like uh, navigation buttons here and image so that you can click and jump into the different visualizations we have so on this dashboard we have two uh, visualizations and one uh, data summary table and the first visualization is the scatter plot and on this scatter plot, I will go through the different uh, filters and the points that uh, you can see here. So the first filter is to select campus as UBCO and uh, UBC Vancouver. And the second filter has two options for the pre uh, 
and post uh, pre-2021 summer and post-2021 summer. That shows where the UMI uh, questions, the, the, the UMI module questions are revised. And on the second, we can select the year now, it is selected uh, pre-2021 summer. So when we select one year, it will show the respected individual instructors data points here. And uh, this filter is for uh, the sessions. For this demo, it is only uh, winter two session is included. That's why it shows only winter two. And then the next filter is for the UMI questions. And all the six UMI questions are listed here. And for better visualization, it's advisable that to select two or three maximum of three UMI questions at a time. And now we selected UMI question one, two, and three. And when you come here, this the blue, uh, the dark blue dots indicates the courses taught by a given instructor. And when you hover over, it says it shows the instructor name, uh, the year in session, the course name, whether the course meets the minimum requirement, the interpolated median, percent favorable, and dispersion index. And the background light blue dot shows all courses and all instructors in, res in the respective campus. So uh, an instructor can see how the courses that he or she taught in context with the overall UBC com campus uh, course and instructor. And these uh, red dots indicate the campus-wide measures for the IM and percent favorable. Then uh, here, when you switch uh, to the pre and post, uh, the question description also shows uh, changes depending on which which period you selected. And here, let me uh, check some points to elaborate uh, and give example as to what Abdulazim shows in the um, slides before. Uh, when we take two points, uh, as you can see, there is no uh, point. Let me select only, show only two UMIs. As he mentioned, there is no point here on these two. And you can see only on the lower left corner and on the upper uh, right corner of the quadrant. And if we take two points here for uh, a given uh, interpolated median, as uh, we go down uh, and as the variation increases, the percent favorable will go down here. And this is just uh, as an example as to what he mentioned earlier. So the upper here point shows the interpolated median of 4.5, percent favorable 95, and the dispersion index of 0.34. But when we go down, uh, the percent favorable will go down while uh, the dispersion index is high. And we can also see for another UMI question here, and let me exclude the first one, and the same example here. If we take these two points, as we go down for the same interpolated median, you can see the percent favorable is 76%, 76% and dispersion index is 0.48. Then when we go, as the dispersion in the index increases, the percent favorable will decline from 76 to 67. And let's see if we can get an example to see how it behaves in the lower quadrant. Uh, let me switch to the other category and take a year in 2021. And if we can have an example here, Okay, for UMI 2, we have points on the lower quadrant. And here the behavior is uh, reversed from what we see. As we go uh, from this point to this point, you can see that uh, the percent favorable and the dispersion index behave the same the higher uh, dispersion index, the higher percent favorable, and the lower uh, dispersion index, the lower percent favorable. 
Then this is for the scatter plot, and let's jump into the second visualization that is the trend line. Uh, so, there is a question in the chat. Is it Ash? Okay, uh, let me see. Okay, when an instructor has more than one section or course, will there be a filter for the course section? Uh, on the current, as we mentioned uh, before, uh, this is this dashboard is still under development, uh, but it is possible we can add a filter here. But currently, it is showing all courses that are given that are taught by that instructor for uh, the same academic for this academic year and for a given section. So here it can be uh, changed to like section um, session winter or summer or winter one or winter two, but we can add uh, a course filter here. That it is a good comment, thank you. And so let's go back to the landing page in order to uh, navigate to the second uh, visualization. Uh, so this is a trend line, and in order to see the visualization here, first we need to we need to select a specific uh, course because we are going to see the behavior of that course throughout time. And we will have the same filter here for the pre and post 2021 summer. Then we will have uh, academic session year here because we are looking for a trend uh, uh, more than uh, two, at least two or more than two academic years need to be selected. The same for the session. And for the UMI question, we need to select like two or maximum of three UMI question at a time. And here the uh, red lines show the person favorable and the blue line show the interpolated median. So uh, you can see here. And when we go to the second filter, uh, definitely, uh, as more data are added uh, in the coming uh, periods, uh, these lines will be a bit longer than the usual. So you can see here, this is for the percent favorable. And this one is for a interpolated median. So this visualization, so how uh, the lines behave for uh, different courses and different academic periods. Then I go back to the landing page and the last part on this dashboard is uh, the summary data. And this shows a summary of the data for the courses that are selected on the scatter plot. And it shows like which period the courses, the question with the full description, whether uh, it meets the minimum requirement, met or not, and the three measures. And it will have uh, these filters. So I think by this, I will finish the dashboard part. If you have any question, uh, I will bring you back to uh, the main presentation. And thank you.